if yes, just just poke me. Um, otherwise, I would suggest um, for tonight we run this in English without any uh, translation, um, and then adapt if uh, if necessary if, if more people are joining. So, um, um, as before, I suggest we start with a quick introduction round uh, from the candidates present, uh, and then we move on to questions from the audience. And um, then there's a list of prepared questions that we've been asking um, the candidates and we can do that again and perhaps uh, vary that a little bit depending on um, yeah, interest from the audience. So um, I suggest again, we start in order of appearance and uh, Marina, you were even here before me. So if you want to start again with a quick introduction, please. Okay, I will never learn next time. I need to wait a few more minutes. <laughs> okay, jokes apart. So, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, hosting uh, this uh, uh, third uh, session. Um, and also, thanks to uh, who will uh, uh, find the time to listen at the, and watch the recordings uh, later. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Marina from uh, the Italian community, even if uh, from 2018 I'm in Germany, so I'm half and half uh, split uh, between uh, the two different communities at the moment. Um, well, I started to uh, interact with uh, what was at that time uh, open office uh, when I was uh, um, at the university, so I was uh, um, as happens really frequently, starting to do some uh, translations, uh, uh, obviously to Italia, and uh, I was doing some uh, QA, so this was uh, the initial uh, way to start to interact with uh, the Open Office project. Uh, then uh, with that, uh, when uh, we, we had uh, the, the fork in uh, 2010, I was more than happy to join uh, the LibreOffice side uh, uh, of, the, of the world. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, I simply uh, continued in, uh, in that direction. Uh, so always working with uh, uh, translations and uh, QA. Plus, uh, uh, with the Italian community, uh, we decided to uh, give a, a legal entity to the, uh, to the local community, uh, founding uh, Libre Italia. Um, always around uh, uh, that time, uh, um, yeah, I was also, uh, no, before the, the LibreOffice time, uh, I was involved uh, uh, in the Open Office for Kids uh, project. Uh, that was uh, this um, C++ fork of Open Office uh, uh, with uh, a custom UI uh, designed, uh, defined for, let's say, kids, uh, several ranges of ages, but yeah, the, the idea was to have a, a simplified uh, uh, user interface of, at the time, open office. Um, then, uh, 2016, uh, I decided to change a bit my involvement uh, with, uh, with the community, and uh, uh, that was uh, the, the first time I decided to run for, uh, for the board, for the uh, TDF board. And uh, yeah, this is my, let's say, second attempt <laughs> uh, to be re-elected uh, in the membership committee. And uh, the idea is to continue to focus on uh, growing uh, uh, the, um, um, the local communities and uh, lower <clears throat> the, the barrier, the gap that is between uh, the international project, so TDF, and uh, uh, the, the local communities. And I think that uh, uh, that's all uh, from my side. Thanks so much, Marina. And um, I just noticed uh, Gustavo, welcome. Uh, third candidate joining uh, for tonight. Um, we were just in the middle of the uh, uh, usual introduction round. Uh, I was wondering, given uh, that the session tonight is um, uh, targeted for, for the Latin American community, um, if if we should do some translation here um, to help with that, and and you would kind of be the the guy who who could uh, probably pull that off. I'm not sure. I mean, you you're like 
you're best connected there, so so you would know whether that would help or not. Well, um, uh, when I saw that there's uh, no uh, Latin Americans here, uh, I was surprised. But uh, the case, uh, I guess, it's uh, because uh, we had a lot of uh, activities during the last weeks uh, because the Latin American conference. Uh, I sent right now a message in our Telegram channel to check uh, if we will have more people here, uh, including uh, Olivier, I guess. Olivier or Daniel can uh, do the translation uh, uh, while uh, I speak. Uh, uh, and the others, of course. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, it, it's it's uh, uh, a surprise. <laughs> I, I'm surprised, okay. but... Uh, then, 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 then let's do it like that. Um, so. my, my explanation is because we had a lot of acti activities during this uh, 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 last uh, months. Uh, uh, at the organization uh, of the conference, Latin American conference. Completely understandable. And and actually that's, um, uh, before you joined, that's actually the, the, the reason um, uh, I was giving. And so, so let's but do it like we, that. If we need, uh, I can translate uh, uh, for uh, Portuguese or Spanish, no problem. Okay, then let's do it as you suggested. So if, if there's a, if there's a community people joining, we would then just switch translation on. Uh, and maybe then we have uh, um, Olivier or Daniel here. So um, first of all, uh, welcome to the uh, to Gabriela and um, there was one, no, yeah, Gabriela is also joining. Cool, so we got the four candidates. Um, in total, and the next one we just go uh, in order of appearance. The next one for the introduction would be Shinji, please. Okay, for me. Okay. Hi, hello. So my name is Shinji Inoki. Uh, I'm from Japan and Japanese. Um, I so start. I joined the so community starting the Open Office era, uh, two thousand eight. Yeah, and uh, QA or uh, QA coordinator and so event organize. And after uh, start. Started so LibreOffice, I joined LibreOffice committee, and I'm also LibreOffice Japanese team founding member. So, and uh, now J Japanese uh, LibreOffice Japanese team member, and so in LibreOffice activity, my activities uh, mainly is also. In Japan, and uh, event organize uh, or uh, so committee organize. And now, so sometimes uh, translating and quality assurance or uh, 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 ask or the ask. And, uh, and uh, so my uh, business, uh, my business is uh, so reverse support consulting, but so in Japanese market is very small, <laughs> and I so my what uh, my task is so everything without so uh, uh, without so development, yeah. And so, 
it's uh, okay. And I forgot that so another thing. Uh, oh, okay. I uh, sometimes so join the so other open source committee um, and uh, open data committee. Uh, so, yes. Uh, so, for example, so I sometimes organize the so Jap Japan Unix Society events. Um, this is a very, very old so uh, committee. Okay. And now, uh, past two years, I'm so MC deputy. And so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. And I will so try to next MC. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Shinji. And um, so, uh, reading the chat, uh, yeah. we we can continue without translation. Um, so, so the next one in the introduction round uh, would then be Gustavo. If if you would please introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, so my name is Gustavo. I'm from Brazil, Porto Alegre, and um, I have. Uh, worked in the community since the open office org age um, and I well I have done all tasks in this project mainly in Brazilian community so um, since 2016 uh, I was elected uh, for the membership committee. And um, since then, uh, I have two, uh, um, two uh, main tasks um, in my collaborative work. Uh, first, um, do the important tasks, <clears throat> do the important task of handle applications with the MCM script inside the membership committee, uh, a task um, uh, important for our uh, formal uh, process as organization. And the other one, uh, my task as a volunteer and, um, and um, someone who wants to push ahead the Latin American community. Um, I decided to run again because um, we are um, in a great moment for Latin American community. Uh, we had a great event um, last week that re represents uh, this good moment uh, and uh, I want to continue contributing with my experience um, inside the membership committee, handle the applications now with the new tool called Proteus, the, M the new MCM tool that uh, fits our process with the GDPR Lau. So I hope um, we can uh, uh, run this, we, we can uh, finish the deploy and run uh, the next, uh, this quarter or the next one, uh, I'm not sure, with the new tool and solve uh, this internal question uh, with success. That is it. Thank you so much, uh, Gustavo, um, and uh, great to have you. Uh, and uh, also great to have uh, Gabriele. Um, excellent that you that you made it. Welcome to that session. And if you would like to introduce yourself with a few words. Good evening, or whatever. 
I'm sorry I can't uh, turn on my camera just because it's uh, late here, it's night, and uh, uh, I can't show me <laughs> myself at the moment. By the way, I'm Gabriele Ponzo, I'm from Italy, the, the middle of Italy, uh, the center. And uh, I also joined the, uh, the project when it was uh, openoffice.org. To be more precise, uh, they had the international conference in Orvieto, which is a town in, in the province of my city. So I decided to go. And uh, in that occasion, I met all these fantastic people and I decided to go deeper in the project. And uh, that was uh, the very, let's say, I was already a user, um, an interested user, an enthusiast user of Open Office and from years. And uh, but in that occasion, I really decided to uh, do the step to uh, again to go deeper in in the project and in the community. So um, from that point on, uh, uh, well, there was the uh, the the birth of the uh, LibreOffice project, and then again there was a second conference in Milan, just like this year, and it was 2013, and in that occasion I became a member of the, the foundation and the next year 2014 i was elected in the membership committee for the very first time and uh, uh since then i have learned so many things about you know the role the, the project uh, the, the foundation and the role of the membership committee but what i have tried to to do honestly in last uh, in those last years uh, i've been um, also, uh, the chairperson of the membership committee when Cornos left for uh, for the uh, board of uh, directors, and uh, in that occasion, I just um, uh, yes, I took his place as a chairperson of the membership committee, and uh, from that point on, let's say that I had the opportunity to uh, how to say. Uh, probably reached the, the top of uh, my experience there, meaning that um, uh, more responsibilities I uh, came on, on upon my head. And uh, for that reason, I was able to have uh, probably a wider um, uh, site of the, of the foundation. And that was the moment I decided to try changing slightly something what i mean is what i also wrote on my uh, presentation let's say and it's it's because um, my experience in the membership committee uh, from 2014 was uh, just to uh, dig into the um, the members uh, evidences let's say let's call it that way i mean you know that to be a member you have to uh, uh, contribute to the project so uh, we as a membership committee we have to uh, see if uh, a person is really contributing or not or is still contributing if he or she is asking for the renewal and that is the most the, the main let's say role of the membership committee but uh, um, from my point of view it was uh, a little bit uh, how to say um, uh, limitating just because so I think Gabriel is uh, breaking off for me. Um, I don't know if the if can... having yeah. uh, lectures and uh... yes, Torsten. No, you're back. I'm, I hear you again. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, maybe my Wi-Fi is not working properly. So just to say that we. I decided, I decided, I say we decided because it, it was an idea, but uh, I had obviously the, uh, the help of the rest of the membership committee. And so that idea was uh, to, took place and we decided to increasing the work of the membership committee uh, in order to uh, trying to get in touch with uh, local communities and to uh, listen to them 
to uh, understand which and what are their um, needs. And so that that's what uh, we are trying to do uh, at the moment too. And I think it is an important thing because uh, uh, let's say that the membership committee from my point of view is not just to uh, just a body who, you know, um, accepts or rejects uh, the members, but should be uh, the body that uh, cares of the members in the whole process. So uh, again, listening to their needs and uh, trying to uh, represent them uh, if, if it's needed, obviously. And uh, again, try to grow the membership uh, base. So that, um, and the last thing I want to say is that uh, from my point of view, uh, it's very important to uh, involve the schools, uh, university, but all, uh, also high schools, just because um, uh, it is really important to have new uh, strength and new uh, uh, people in, uh, in, the, in the foundation, but possibly young people. So. That. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I you're still breaking up a little bit, but I I hope that um, that the gist of what you said uh, came across. Um, I wonder if you can m maybe just move a little bit so with a bit more stable. So right now it seems like your your connection is good. Um, well, let's see if that holds. Um, thanks so much for that um, for that introduction uh, to all the candidates. Um, and we would now move on uh, and open up for questions. Um, so the uh, the procedure would be that uh, there would be questions from the audience if you. Um, would like to uh, ask a question, just, just raise your hand or speak uh, or uh, type it in the chat. Uh, and then the candidates would take turns uh, to answer the question. Uh, and then we uh, rinse and repeat and continue with that. So, yeah, would there be any, any questions from anyone um, for the candidates? There have been some questions already on the list. Um, some of them have been answered. Um, so we would have a we would have a backlog of questions to ask, but um, let's see if there's from the local, as in particular from from the Latin American community, if there's questions. Yeah, I should. Okay, then um, let me just um, fill in uh, with the first question and then maybe that leads uh, to more questions. Um, uh, many of the candidates already touched on the um, uh, question. Hey, Gabriele, now we see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, everyone touched uh, on the question of growing um, the membership. Uh, sometimes the membership, sometimes the membership base. That there might be a subtle difference. So um, maybe a question to all the candidates: uh, What would be your plan uh, to grow either membership or membership base um, in your term? And um, again, we start um, with Marina, and then move on to Shinji and uh, Gustavo, and then Gabriela. Please, Marina. Well, uh, the members, uh, so with uh, um, when I'm talking about members, I'm in this case talking about uh, um, not just uh, the contributors of uh, our project, but uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, what uh, is defined as a, a board of trustees. So the, the members uh, of the foundation uh, that uh, have the right to run for the board, uh, run for the MC, or uh, in general uh, to to be the the voters uh, for uh, for the elections. So 
I think that in general uh, is um, extremely important to, to be able to uh, represent uh, all the different uh, um, contributions area and uh, uh, also uh, the, the, different, uh, the differences that we have uh, inside the different local communities. So with uh, growing uh, uh, the, the group of members, uh, uh, what I have in mind, uh, but it's not just my idea, it's something that we already started with the term that is ongoing, um, is to try to um, increase the contacts uh, between the local communities and uh, the international uh, group, so TDF as International Foundation, and with that uh, start to grow um, contributors uh, that can uh, uh, then uh, apply for the membership uh, and uh, uh, in, a, in a second time also maybe decide to be involved so much that uh, uh, they want to even be uh, an active part of the governance of TDF. Um, so this one is the general, uh, the, the, the general idea. Uh, how to do it? Uh, well, mm, one approach uh, uh, is to, first of all, uh, start to uh, learn more about uh, our community. Um, the first attempt uh, was the survey, then uh, we organized uh, uh, those uh, uh, meetings uh, with, uh, with the local communities for uh, uh, getting more feedback. Uh, and uh, the next step uh, is, of course, to continue in that direction uh, with uh, uh, more uh, of those meetings uh, with the local communities, with the others that we are still uh, missing, uh, and uh, at the same time uh, working parallel with the feedback that we already got for um, trying to, to make uh, real uh, the uh, feedback, uh, the proposals uh, that we already collected. So it should be a, a kind of uh, a continuous uh, uh, work uh, where we are uh, learning uh, and uh, acting uh, uh, for um, improving uh, uh, the, the connections between the local communities and uh, the uh, international project. That's it from my side. Thank you very much, Marina. Uh, and a question with uh, uh, Henderson and Raphael joining. Uh, should we start with translating now? Uh, let me check, um, Rafael, Anderson, um, vocês se sentem confortáveis em ouvir as respostas em inglês? I'm asking them uh, if uh, they are comfortable to hear the questions in English. Yeah, and uh, Rafael at least answers on the chat that it be okay for him. So, so let's continue in English then, and um, please do speak up, uh, poke me um, on the chat, uh, or um, just speak up, uh, and we can always um, uh, provide um, uh, Brazilian Portuguese or Spanish translation. Uh, so next one then, um, with answering that the question about uh, the growing the membership base would be Shinji, would you please? Okay. Okay. And so, so, uh, so, so grow the membership base is uh, so, uh, I think so many, can many approach. Uh, so, one approach is uh, so each local committee or each global project uh, challenge to the uh, new contributor. Uh, so, but so uh, now, so it's a uh, different way is also uh, not active 
so area forecast to the marketing. Uh, so get to new, con new, new contribution. So for example, so for Africa or so other countries. But so, uh, uh, it's a little problem because so, uh, who is uh, working <laughs> for the so enhance the so new area. And uh, for very easy to challenge is also each area. So now area, for example, so for me, I, I will try to the spread in Japan. Uh, it's easy to challenge. And so uh, I think it's a little difficult point is that so uh, one point is a desktop application is now uh, not hot point. Uh, I don't know so result. Uh, but so, uh, so uh, we uh, we need to search the so uh, needs for the library office. It's an important point. Now I so recently in Japan, so some case is a so Windows server for the Windows server and uh, remote desktop using LibreOffice case. Uh, some case I hear. And so, uh, yeah, we want to the user base and after, so contributor, so uh, grow the contributors and so step step by step is important. Uh, I think so small step is very, very important. So it's not uh, so success to the big step. Yeah. And yeah, so, and so, Marina say it's a, so feedback is also important, I think. So I will try to the, so uh, uh, say uh, so for the local committee, so feedback, get the feedback, the continue. So uh, sorry, I, I, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm not so good, answer. I'm not ha having the good answer, but so I want to try to small step. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shinji, uh, for that, for that um, uh, deep insight into the uh, Japanese project and uh, what you're planning to do there. Thanks so much. And uh, next one then would be Gustavo. What's your take on that question? Um, I think first we should get uh, people interested in the project. Uh, and to do it, uh, we should connect the project, our actions with the mainstream. Um, we did it here in latin american conference as uh, i said in the one of our last meetings the first one with the japanese and asian community uh, we uh, had here lectures about python and libreoffice and crypto with libreoffice with a lot of people there 
one uh, and we had uh, a hands-on um, with Rafael here uh, about uh, Python as well and uh, all activities with this uh, 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 with this uh, um, characterist uh, were a success here in the conference and side by side with our traditional uh, terms like documentation for example um, so i think we can uh, try to involve more uh, engaged people with the project first uh, and after that um, probably and or, or i'm sure we will find people with skills time time it's very important and talent to contribute with the organization with the tdf as an organization with the engagement uh, and as i say time time is important for for uh, 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 important time is important for important tasks <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, to be part of the organization as a member with uh, uh, the responsibilities of a member. So uh, first, the main focus is the project. Then after, I'm sure we will find people uh, from local communities, from uh, a cultural uh, 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 characteristics, uh, with uh, another places we we uh, uh, don't have people right now for example uh, United United States uh, maybe uh, first the project and after membership and the organization Thorsten okay thank you very much uh, gustavo and that does make a lot of sense like growing the uh let's like growing the membership base like the, the number of people you can then uh going forward recruit members from um thanks a lot for that insight and uh gabriella you will be next what's your take yeah sure i'd say that there is not so much to add uh but um again uh it's important to um, talk about the project and explain what is LibreOffice in all these sides, all these aspects, just to, which is what I used to do uh, during my lectures. Uh, I see a red sign. I don't know if you can hear me. I hope so. Yeah, it's anyway. all wonderful. It's all great. Okay. Uh, I Maybe I better turn off the camera. So um, uh, the... Um, Let's say that the, the first step so is the communication to inform uh, the majority of the people uh, out there that LibreOffice exists if they don't know uh, that it exists and then to explain what is because um, uh, not um, not so far in the past yesterday evening I was uh, at our meeting uh, it was kind of a party to be honest and um, you know chatting with a, with a, a teacher I said, you know, um, part of the project of LibreOffice. Oh, my daughter has been using so many years, but but you know, so uh, there is plenty of people knowing now what is LibreOffice as a software, but they don't know what is as a project. So the other sides of it and how uh, they could contribute, even uh, not specifically as a de development, which is always welcome, obviously, but. Uh, um, as I used to say, there are so many ways to contribute and to help the project. So, and so there is so many people uh, who could help in the project, uh, not just you know uh, uh, developers, we, which are again welcomed. But uh, uh, talking in in, in uh, terms of statistics, they are just you know uh, kind of uh, a narrow part of the society. So. Uh, explaining what is LibreOffice as a project and how they can, how people can help it to grow 
and to uh, uh, improve better, improve uh, more and more. And then from that point on, trying to uh, probe if there are people, if um, there are persons who like the idea and who could uh, be interested in contributing. So these are the first steps, obviously. And again, I, I'm aiming to the young people, especially just because it's, it's kind of, you know, um, growing them up with us. So when they are involved in the project, chances are that they could stay and, uh, and take care of the project for a long time. And then, obviously, this, this is just to um, uh, getting in touch with uh, new people uh firstly as our community members but then the next step obviously well not so obviously but uh, um hopefully <laughs> should be the the membership uh in the in the foundation uh as it was for me just as a further step to uh get deeper in the project and uh take some responsibility and uh, for example in contributing uh you know regularly uh, and then um, being part possibly uh, of the of the elections and why not to, to be part of the membership committee or the board of directors i mean uh, at the end to uh, mm, slowly and step by step uh, come closer and closer to the project and, uh, and to our community and to the foundation itself so again to sum up um, explain what is LibreOffice to one who doesn't know and see if they are interested and let them become part of a project, uh, especially for young people. Thanks a lot, Gabriella. And uh, uh, for nothing much to add, you, I think you, you managed quite well to find, uh, to find, find a nice angle um, uh, to, to, to dive into there. Um, so that concludes the first round. Uh, we have a follow-up question from the audience. Um, you can see that in the chat. Uh, we would again start with Marina. I'm just quickly summarizing. Um, so, so with a very successful Latin America conference, um, how how can we like with the people showing up there, which was like the numbers I heard was like something like three, four hundred or something. Um, how can we attract those people to become community members and then going forward, uh, TDF members? Uh, well, we we didn't have uh, these numbers so with the uh, Italian community, but uh, I I saw something uh, something similar also also there. Uh, the the point is that uh, people that are um, contributing locally. Uh, are not always uh, interested uh, to, to do the, the next step. For some, it's just a matter of uh, uh, not being uh, interested to, to travel uh, and to meet uh, physically at the events of uh, the, the, the international community. Uh, for others, it's just a matter of uh, time. So probably what uh, we can try to do in, uh, in that direction uh, is to try to uh, organize uh, uh, activities uh, on uh, international level that can uh, uh, be delegated um, or coordinated better with, uh, with the local communities. So trying to uh, make also the local communities part of what we are doing uh, at uh, international level. I think that uh, um, if we can engage more with, uh, with the local communities, uh, uh, then uh, we can um, naturally see them uh, uh, also joining uh, other other events um, the, the other step to to make uh, i think it's also to organize uh, more activity uh, activities locally because at least uh, this was my experience uh, my involvement started uh, in that way there were local events uh, from the open office community i started to meet people i started to attend uh, and with that uh, uh, I was simply, yeah, curious to to see those people that were just uh, uh, nicknames uh, online or, or in general people that uh, I was uh, starting to know online. So 
yeah, uh, I think this could be an idea. I mean, 373 people uh, attending uh, the LATAM conference, um, chapeau, <laughs> really well done. No? Uh, I hope to see something similar uh, uh, also at the other next uh, future um, LibreOffice conference, I mean, the international one. That's all from my side. Back to you, Darsen. Thanks a lot, Marina. And yeah, just to echo that, uh, impressive numbers there. Great job. Um, yeah, next one then, Shinji, um, your answer to that question. Okay. So, um, yes, uh, sometimes so many people join the conference, uh, for example, Asian, liberal Asian conference, but so uh, many people uh, not a liberal committee member. Uh, usually, so, so other uh, very close the committee, open source committee member, so Linux users group, or uh, so OpenSUSE, or uh, so Debian, or uh, so contributor, so comes to the event, uh, uh, our event. Uh, it's, it's no problem, so. And, and so, other case is, uh, uh, so, liberal committee member, so active committee member, but sometimes not uh, apply to the membership committee, uh, membership. Uh, so, I, I don't know reasons, so, but so I, I guess to, uh, so one reason is uh, so phys physical problem. So uh, uh, one reason is our language barrier, but so one reason is also uh, responsi responsibility. So because so uh, many contrib contributors so want to the uh, their task, not to interest to the governance. Uh, and so checking the so English email also and work, so government, so email, governance uh, emails are uh, so uh, very so hard work to read, read the email. And so maybe they want uh did uh, so they uh want focus to own task i see so as uh, it, it's uh, so uh difficult to the sort of uh, so I think so uh, one suggest uh, it's also global news translate translating to the Japanese and so over so each language uh, sometimes so so catch up to easy to catch up, <laughs> but so uh, not it's not a uh, I I don't know so it's it uh, it is working or not working I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shinji. Uh, and and yeah, I think that's kind of re repeat um, pattern that 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 language barrier is is. I mean, that's been mentioned frequently as a barrier um, for for let's say because membership mm, mm, very often is is like more international than than just being active in, in a local community. So 
so, so that does resonate indeed. But but maybe Gustavo, um, you have some some more insight there, some more details on on that uh, number and and the the community there. So um, let me check the Gilliam questions. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a big event here. We have a big, big event here. <clears throat> uh, and it was a result of months of planning. Uh, first, um, it's important uh, to say that um, we counted with the TDF support because our country, it's very big, Latin American, it's big as continent, as country and as continent. Uh, so um, a lot of people uh, wanted to go to the event to, to, um, to be together after two years um, with online um, relation um, inside the project. And after two years of our first Latin American conference in Paraguay, uh, where uh, we had around 100 people attending. Um, then for this uh, event, this edition in Brasilia, uh, we counted with a local team uh, and a university to host our event and uh, engage the students, the young students, to be in our event. The most part of the attendants were uh, students in the first or second year. Um, and uh, another topic that it's important, it's the topic about the connection with the mainstream, connection with the interest of the young people. Uh, and to do it, uh, we decided to uh, focus in our competence, in the, in the competence of the Latin, Latin American uh, uh, community. Uh, we don't have developers here, not for the project, for, for LibreOffice code, but uh, we have a lot of people interested in develop extensions in Python, in Basic, or whatever. This uh, is one uh, of uh, uh, big topics. This was one of the big topics of the conference. And we had uh, another topics like, for example, crypto. Crypto uh, is a nice uh, uh, term, like a clickbait to get people involved with the project. You, you can see a, a, a topic like this and well, please, Think, think twice, use free software and LibreOffice to protect uh, your, your uh, account uh, and your strategy, your setup uh, of investment uh, in crypto, something like that. Um, and <clears throat> another point, uh, another important point is uh, we also uh, have uh, strategy to yes crypto <laughs> uh, we have a strategy to keep uh, exploring these topics online for the whole community because we didn't have uh, uh, streaming this year maybe the next one but this year not so we will keep uh, exploring these uh, 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 temps, these uh, 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 topics in online meetings 
during uh, the next months, for example, involving the community and uh, uh, involving the students uh, that who, who was uh, there in the conference. I'm not sure I, I answered all uh, Guillaume's questions, but um, well, uh, that is it for the moment. Thanks a lot, Gustavo, for that uh, for that insight. Um, um, yes. I think one one of the questions there, like um, so, so what would you say, like from 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 the students, um, how many would would become? community members or who already started to to play with extensions mm. or play with the code or many of them uh, will start to use uh, the applications uh, for the first time uh, maybe we will get I don't know uh, five ten in the next weeks months uh, uh, we first, should uh, uh, do a review of our conference inside the core team to identify uh, the points uh, we we rocks uh, and the points we need to improve for the next conference. So uh, we don't have the the, the whole context uh, uh, clear uh, at the moment. Very cool, very encouraging, good, good stuff there. Um, thanks a lot. And uh, Gabriela, um, your your insight. And and of course, I mean, you have been touching that with the, with, with all your, your work that you did uh, in the Italian community, but, but yeah, just interested in your take there. Uh, yes, uh, as I was writing, my point of view is that uh, we should let people have fun. The reason for which I, um, I took part of the project in Orvieto, for example, is it was just because I met people in person and I had a lot of fun with that. And I was impressed by uh, the talks and the, uh, you know, all the, the topics they, uh, the, how to say, talked about during the, the conference in Orvieto. I remember especially Olivier was impressing me. Uh, in particular, I didn't know so much, so many details about, you know, the usage of open office at that time in Brazil, for example. So, um, again, uh, uh, my point of view is that, uh, first of all, we should uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, COVID, uh, COVID permitting, uh, we should try to get in touch with the person, with the people um, as much as possible uh, in person, meet in person. And uh, let them let them have fun, but not playing ping pong or <laughs> or soccer. <laughs> uh, letting them have fun in uh, in the LibreOffice project. So uh, uh, how used to say uh, uh, putting the hands on on the project, the hands on the, on the on the project uh, on, on all its part. For example, something that really uh, i really liked i, I obviously uh, how to say i um, look back to my experiences and i try to to get uh, what was appealing to me and uh, i took i take these examples to to possibly appeal someone else so uh, something was really appealing to me for example was uh, the um uh, how to say the workshop we had in Brussels, one of the first times I was there, probably the first time, and I did my very first kind of patch. I wouldn't call it patch because I just moved a, an underline <laughs> from one letter to another letter on the menu. But anyway, it was improving because, for example, I'm a I'm power user um, of the of the keyboard. I don't use so much the the mouse. So to me, it was very important to have, uh, um, how to say, a unique letter calling a function in the menu. So again, 
showing that it is easy, it is possible, and it is funny to contribute to the project. But not only giving lectures, which are important, really important, but possibly well balancing lectures with workshops, meaning that uh, there you can play, you can try yourself, helped by, you know, uh, mentors and uh, other um, elder members of the project who can help and uh, uh, introduce you in the project itself and, uh, and explain how to contribute in all the, all the possible way to do that. So possibly more than uh, one workshop, uh, one for each uh, area, I would say. So uh, one for coding, uh, one for um, the uh, bacteria triaging, so uh, the one the, the workshops use Cisco used to to do, and uh, as well as um, uh, also the marketing area, or the translating area, or the infrastructure, all the areas I used to uh, to say about during my lectures. Uh, but it would be really great to have uh, uh, one workshop uh, for each, or at least for the most ones. And uh, and letting people being involved on their with their hands on the on the project itself and realize how uh, satis how much satisfaction does it give when you see that your improvement your help have been um, has been uh, you know implemented and released in the in the next uh, uh, release of the of the software so that was something that really gave me back so much satisfaction and I would like to show and to let people feel the satisfaction just because it was something that uh, appealed me so much and uh, kept me within the project so for a so long uh, age, so long period. Thank you very much, Gabriele, and and yeah, very insightful and and fun is such a great motivator, and uh, and that's what at the end of the day we're all here for, like to have a lot of fun in the project. Thanks to all the candidates for for that uh, for for all the extensive answers. Um, so, uh, are there more questions from from the community? There's lots of background information in, in the chat. Um, I think that we, we can just let it stand for itself and people can read that um, more, even more insightful there. Um, so if there's no immediate question, I would have uh, one um, that kind of goes a little bit back to the, to the initial question, um, which is, um, if you are a member, then of course one of your your rights is uh, to vote, and um, uh, the participation, the, the percentage of members um, participating in in the votes is, um, I think, over the years it's a little bit of up and down, but I think it's it's um, over the years by and large the trend is a bit declining. So, is there something that um, all of you as candidates? would have in mind to make the voting more attractive or to kind of communicate how important it is to, to exercise that right to vote. And, uh, we would start with Marina again. Yeah, uh, so I think that uh, for engaging more the voters, uh, we need to explain them uh, that uh, they can vote <laughs> and it seems uh, uh, a job but uh, uh, as I was also mentioning uh, in the previous uh, se sessions uh, um, we still have uh, after so many years uh, um, contributors uh, that uh, aren't aware that uh, TDF uh, is also this uh, legal entity behind uh, the project, uh, that uh, uh, there is a, a legal uh, structure with uh, different uh, uh, bodies uh, that are uh, doing uh, the, taking care of the governance of the project. So I think that first of all, we should uh, explain them uh, uh, how TDF is uh, organized, uh, how it works, uh, uh, and uh, why it's important to 
to take part uh, in the elections uh, and also to uh, to be an active uh, uh, member standing up uh, for uh, running for, uh, for those uh, elections um the other point uh, is uh, uh, to communicate more and better uh, because um, sometimes it is uh, just uh, easy to discuss things uh, in a, a smaller circle or um, sometimes we are giving uh, uh, the general idea, the general feedback, uh, the, what we are planning to do. Uh, we are sharing this uh, with, uh, with the community uh, when uh, less or more we defined everything. Uh, and uh, this gives uh, the impression that uh, uh, the, the, the members uh, are not really an active part in this, uh, in this side of the governance. So I'm re really looking forward to uh, Decidim and uh, every other idea that uh, we could uh, find for making uh, the process of taking decisions uh, and uh, steering uh, the foundation uh, uh, more uh, more open and uh, more transparent. We had already some steps uh, uh, in, in this direction, but I think we should do still uh, more. We should engage more uh, with, uh, with the local communities. Uh, I'm really stressing uh, this concept because uh, I, I'm really feeling uh, the, the distance between uh, the the activities done uh, on a local level and uh, everything else that is going on uh, at uh, TDF. So uh, I think that uh, if we can engage more with the local communities and with the local contributors, uh, then uh, uh, being more active uh, and uh, uh, having more people taking part uh, um, to the election will be something uh, kind of uh, natural that should happen uh, less or more uh, naturally without searching uh, people or sending uh, one million of reminders uh, uh, when there are uh, elections uh, going on. That's it. Thanks a lot, Marina. And um, now that you mentioned Decidim, um, we actually uh, uh, get a little bit further there with the uh, first workshop and uh, set up and um, the training session um, planned. Uh, so, so there's progress and hopefully something to see rather sooner than later. Um, yeah, but on this um, uh, get the vote out question, Shinji, what would be your take to encourage people there? Yeah, so in Japan case, uh, uh, so it is often not noted. Important to inform. Uh, or maybe it uh, so for for the TDF members. Uh, so it's a uh, Telegram group. So for Japanese Telegram group is. Uh, uh, notice is uh, important. And other case is uh, so using so Twitter or uh, writing blog or uh, so uh, other social network, uh, SNS or uh, so mailing list. Uh, yes, maybe so another so each local community is same, <laughs> I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shinji. Um, so, so yeah, um, I think that's just um, uh, confirming, like indeed, that, that like how important that is that that we have um, like people like with with good contacts in the local communities, like to. Uh, to to get the message out there and um, thanks for doing that. Um, then uh, Gustavo, your take on that question? Um, it's it's an interesting question. Um, I agree with Marina. I agree with Marina. With all uh, <coughs> well, the the comment. <coughs> 
I agree with all the comments from Marina. Um, and change it for sure. Um, but let me point um, another question that it's important to solve uh, after 10 years of project and two years uh, without uh, the, the, the right uh, uh, um, uh, the, the common way of communication. Um, to encourage people to vote or to participate, um, we should also um, do our best as uh, bodies of the foundation. And uh, we had uh, some uh, conflict, some communication issues in the last, um, I don't know, let's see, uh, um, one, two years, right? So uh, this uh, 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 scenario, this panorama, uh, puts members far uh, from the decisions, from the participation. So uh, I hope, I hope, uh, we can um, we can reach our path to a best moment for us as uh, bodies of the foundation. Uh, after uh, some conflicts, have some difference uh, uh, of opinions, um, I hope we can started in the next conference uh, in one month ahead in Milano. Uh, and uh, for me, it's too much important, uh, this topic, because it's a way to demonstrate, to uh, uh, present TDF as a foundation with uh, uh, the people uh, that can uh, agree uh, even uh, with difference uh, between uh, uh, opinions or uh, strategies or uh, uh, technical uh, um, um, questions. Uh, when we solve this, I think uh, we will demonstrate to our members, uh, we are in the right way to encourage people to vote and see we are going ahead. Thorsten. Ah, now, now I think I'm unmuted. Thank you very much, uh, Gustavo. Um, yeah, and I think that there's a lot of truth uh, to that, that, um, yeah, it's not fun to, to see people um, fighting. So it's much more fun um, if it's if it's nice and friendly. So, so I, I guess you, you touch a valid point there. Um, yeah, so Gabriele, um, what's, what's your solution to the... Uh, uh, get the world out question. Well, I don't have a solution in the hand, but uh, I do completely agree with Marina, Gustavo, and Shinji, which is uh, a good starting point, I would say. What I want to add, to add is uh, <clears throat> the question is how to encourage more members to vote. Well, from my point of view, to encourage people to vote, um, we should demonstrate that it is useful to vote. So, uh, again, surely we don't have to uh, show uh, ourselves fighting. This is the first point, obviously. But also, as I was mentioning at the beginning, uh, it is useful to vote if you uh, uh, can be heard from the people you voted. Just like in regular elections in politics and, you know, in, uh, in our countries. <laughs> because at the end it's all 
it, it, it involves also some politics here. So the question, the, the point is, uh, if you, uh, if we will be able to demonstrate that voting is uh, useful, because voting, someone uh, can bring a, a steering to the foundation, or at least can uh, uh, bring the uh, the possibility to to be heard from those represent uh, representing persons elected or voted. So this is a key point from my point of view. And uh, so again, uh, listening to the communities, listening to the people uh, with every possible um, tool. So including the CDIM, discourse, uh, telegram and whatever. It is not easy. And sometimes it is also the opposite of easy. It's really hard to uh, keep track of all those communication channels, uh, but we should strive to make it possible. I mean, even uh, with uh, dedicated people, appointed people to do that, uh, to track all these channels and, and uh, uh, filters, let's say, uh, among you know the the, the old all the mass of messages, uh, now and then there will be obviously some requests and uh, or some suggestion which could be interesting and uh, which could deserve to be uh, highlighted. So uh, again, listening to the communities with all possible uh, ways, and so demonstrating that. Uh, to vote is a useful act, is a useful um, <clears throat> gesture, and um, and that's all I would say. Because uh, you know, I've uh, heard many times from community members uh, something like, uh, "But I don't need to be part of a, of the foundation. I'm already part of a community of the project. I'm I'm fine with that." This means that, well. One of the reasons could be that um, maybe this person hasn't seen the the reason to uh, uh, to vote just because uh, maybe he or she has uh, uh, some idea or some suggestion or some need, and probably we didn't uh, give any any feedback to it. Could be obviously an option. But at least we should, from my point of view, uh, strive to uh, to do that. I see that Marina wants to uh, reply. So Marina, please. Uh, yeah, I would like just to add that, uh, of course, listening is the, the first uh, step. Uh, but then uh, we also need to to start with to to to, to make uh, uh, concrete actions uh, with uh, with the feedback we are getting from uh, from the local community. Otherwise, it's just uh, like to throw ideas uh, and uh, um, knowing uh, that in any case, uh, uh, on the other side, uh, no one is uh, doing anything with all these ideas and all uh, these proposals that are coming from uh, from the community. So listening uh, to the community uh, it, it's uh, just a, a first uh, step but uh, yeah I think we should uh, do better in uh, making uh, things uh, real and uh, concrete so the the follow-up part of it just wanted to add this yeah yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Thanks, thanks, Gabriella, also for for the very very insightful answer there. So so so, my my summary would then be that that you all four of you would exclude the possibility that um, everybody is just happy with everything is going fine. So and that's why why nobody thinks there's a need to vote. It's more like um, this not feeling heard. If if that, that would be my my summary of what you all said and uh, and or like not knowing um or not not realizing that that indeed voting can make a difference marina wrong summary for me 
Uh, no, it's not wrong. Uh, I think that also deciding to not vote is a sign. I mean, the assumption that uh, uh, some of the members are missing uh, the, the the step that uh, they can vote, yeah, could be there. But uh, I also think that uh, some of our members are just uh, annoyed, uh, upset, uh, and uh, not voting uh, is a is a sign. is a is a way to say something. And uh, yeah. It's true that uh, with uh, with COVID in general, uh, several communities uh, uh, got uh, less members uh, active uh, uh, and so on. It's not just uh, TDF, uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's not just uh, COVID, uh, the, the reason of uh, this uh, negative trend. Uh, I, I have uh, this feeling and I don't think it's just uh, a, a feeling. Yeah, so um, to tell you the truth, that, that would also be my, my hunch. So I, I would agree with that that notion without any, having any hard data. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nice that it's like that, but it's kind of good that we, we seem to have consensus here that that is likely um, one of the reasons behind that. Um, okay, so um, that concludes that round. Um, I was wondering if maybe from the uh, Latin American community, maybe Luciana, if you have a question for the candidates, I think Rafael uh, dropped out, but um, yeah, just, just to encourage you to, to ask a question. Rafael is gone because he teaches at night in the university. You're right, but Luciana is still here, so I was wondering if she she has a question. Hi, everybody. I'm Luciana speaking. Uh, for me, it's okay. And I want to say that the conference here at Brasilia was really interesting. As Gustavo said before, we could meet after a long period of uh, being all at home and so and so on. And I want to thank everybody and Gustavo, principally Rafael, they were great. And that's it. Uh, my vote is registered and I'm here if you need something from Brazil and from Brasilia and from the, the documentation team, I'm here for to, to help you. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, just uh, um, Guillaume was, uh, was mentioning that the vote is uh, open since about 26 minutes. So uh, while we're on this, get the vote out. Um, everyone is encouraged to um, maybe after the call quickly uh, check that. Um, okay, anybody else then with a question? Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, indeed. Thank, thanks so much, to everyone who who made that such a roaring success there. So appreciated. Okay, then let me uh, paste the question again and um, ask it um, also here. So. Um, We've been we've been talking about the transparency or, or um, making things more more visible um, in many ways, and for the uh, membership committee in particular, um, how much of the uh, let's say processes, decisions, and discussions, and perhaps also like the the yardsticks, like how how are contributions evaluated, um, how much should, of that should be public? Um, either to the general public or to the members? That would be the question. And Marina, would you like to start? Yeah. Uh, well, there are some uh, discussions uh, uh, in the EMC that, of course, can't be public. Uh, and with this, I mean uh, uh, the uh, discussions uh, that uh, we are having uh, when uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, a, a decision to take uh, about a particular uh, renewal or a new uh, membership request and so on. So it's clear that those kind of informations are 
confidential and we can't share that in public. Uh, one could argue that maybe we could uh, um, aggregate uh, and uh, um, provide a, a kind of summary that could, uh, uh, in any case, uh, uh, without naming uh, directly the members, uh, explain better how this process uh, works. And uh, yes, we could do something in that direction, uh, but still, uh, in some cases, uh, um, it's uh, still complex because, for example, it could be uh, the an explanation that uh, maybe is addressing, uh, I don't know, a, specific uh, local community where uh, we have, uh, I don't know, one uh, contributor translating for that language uh, or um, a, a topic that is covering uh, uh, a, a specific area of the contribution where it's easy to uh, connect the dots and understand uh, which is the subject of the discussion. So for all those cases, uh, of course, we need to be uh, careful and uh, avoid to disclose anything uh, that could uh, um, reveal uh, those kind of uh, confidential informations. But uh, for uh, everything else uh, that uh, uh, we are uh, working on, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, definitely uh, improve and do, do more, do better. Um, we tried uh, to, to do something similar uh, with, uh, with this term. I mean, I'm talking about this term because I'm in the EMC for one term, so I can't see, I, I can't talk <laughs> for uh, um, for what was uh, was the, the past. But uh, at least uh, in, uh, in this term, we, we tried a bit more. Um, we were also thinking to, to do something similar to what the board is doing. Uh, so with uh, uh, in, uh, a public part at the beginning of uh, our uh, um, meetings, uh, the issue there was that uh, we ended up with um, uh, a, a slot for our calls so that was just 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes, having uh, 10 or 15 minutes of public part uh, was uh, definitely uh, something hard to, to achieve. But uh, yeah, we could, uh, for example, go with uh, uh, just uh, some public sessions uh, like uh, those meetings with local communities that uh, uh, we already organized. And uh, something that uh, uh, has been uh, also uh, asked uh, in the previous uh, sessions. Uh, uh, yes, we could also try to document a bit more um, uh, which are the uh, contributions uh, that uh, um, are uh, considered uh, uh, non-trivial uh, and we could uh, give uh, some uh, more uh, examples uh, or some more uh, guidance uh, to the uh, contributors that uh, are thinking to, to apply for a uh, for membership. In particular, because we had cases, uh, and it's quite frequent, to get uh, uh, applications where uh, uh, the contributions uh, mentioned are just, uh, uh, I want to contribute to LibreOffice, so I'm applying for the membership. and. Uh, yeah, as you know, it's the other way around. You are contributing and then you can apply for the membership. So together with those kind of guidance, uh, we should also explain uh, um, how the membership work and uh, how the, the membership committee uh, works. And uh, yeah, back to you, Tosta. Thanks a lot for that extensive answer. And uh, Shinji, um, what do you think? Um, could there be more transparency from the MC? Mm, so, almost I agree, Marina. So, yeah. And so, adding the point is uh, so, some cases uh, uh, we didn't so respond quickly for the application, but this is a system issue. Maybe new system is uh, this problem is clear. And so communication is maybe important. And so, yeah, 
And so, uh, other point is a criteria. That's so, criteria is uh, so, defines a very difficult. Uh, so, a little so simple uh, criteria can make, but so, uh, it's not what uh, it, um, uh, but so, uh, it's program to transparency, I don't know, so, <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Okay, so so if, if I if I got you there, that you you say that that the some criteria um, are yeah. easy to to publish or to document, and um, but there's other areas where it's not worthwhile because it's it's very very complex or difficult. Yeah. So criteria. So create criteria is. Uh, uh we can but um so maybe so it's it's not to solve the transparency maybe uh, and so detail so criteria is not create creates the very difficult Okay, thanks a lot. So, so, but that does seem like like there there was some um, um, some at least the, the two of you agree that a little bit more is certainly possible. And uh, thank you for that answer. Um, then uh, Gustavo, what's your take on that? Okay, uh, first of all. Um, sensitive information about approvals or denies are for MC only. Um, and this uh, represents the main part of our, our work. But uh, for sure, we can turn uh, our process more transparent. <clears throat> uh, a lot of members uh, mainly those uh, who have a language barrier uh, fill in our form with less information than we need to decide. Uh, every quarter we have this problem. Uh, the question is that they work, they contribute, they participate, but they don't share the information with us in the right way. Uh, but it's not their problem. Um, I think it's our problem to inform uh, the members we need this uh, those information. Um, and uh, for sure, uh, inform, communicate better, uh, will uh, improve our relation with the members. I think it's a way to be transparent, um, to be uh, uh, to, to turn public our uh, 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 approach to the site, uh, because. Uh, the process is uh, the, the main problem, uh, uh, not the statutes or uh, the, the, the contributions of the members. Um, if we improve uh, the communication with the members, um, I'm sure we will uh, do better our work inside the membership committee. Thank you, Gustavo, for that answer. And um, yeah, I, I guess that 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 is that there's some quite some truth to that. That um, like 
making people understand how it works then solves solves a lot of those problems because of understanding it's not that anybody's doing that on purpose um okay so uh gabriele then what's your take should we do more or less of that well all of my colleagues already spoke about the the sensitive data we have to handle when we have to decide about members and um, I won't say anything more than uh, what they already said because it's, I think it's understood. Uh, what we could do more is, um, especially now that we are trying to extend the operations and the activity of the membership committee, we could uh, be more transparent on that part. Um, meaning that, as Marina said, we could try to have public part of the, parts of the meeting or probably better proceed with these uh, online uh, regular, possibly regular meetings with local communities. And, uh, and this is, uh, anyway, uh, I mean to, a way to have to, to be transparent and to uh, keep in touch with the, with the, the community. Uh, meaning also that if they have some question about our operations, our activities, they could uh, just ask uh, kind of real time. And um, uh, something we should uh, probably improve is also the publishing of the, our minutes, uh, which is something that we uh, do regularly, but just for the, uh, how to say, uh, formal part about the membership just because we have to do that uh, why the uh, we call it private part but not just not not because it, it is private it, it just to uh, separate from the formal part and uh, no indeed we call it informal sorry uh, by the way <clears throat> we should probably improve on that meaning that we should try to uh, uh, publish more of what we discuss uh, aside of uh, of the membership strictly talking so uh, renewal process and whatever about uh, <clears throat> criteria um, I made some um, uh, template uh, replying messages just because as Marina said uh, it happens now and then, but quite often that people uh, first ask to be a member, then willing to, to, to contribute. While as she, as she explained, it's quite the opposite um, following our stages. So uh, I have <coughs> a kind of template, but also in that template, I also uh, have a link to some video what we could do is uh, probably prepare some more video to explain uh, better which are these, these criteria and how to uh, uh, when to apply for membership uh, how to become a member and uh, how to keep uh, being a member uh, there are plenty of videos of uh, our lectures to conferences, mine, Marina, Gustavo, and we could also reuse that, or we could decide, uh, but the time is not, uh, it's always not so much to prepare a specific video, not one, you know, uh, capturing our lecture, but a specific video well done to explain this. But uh, uh, to be honest, uh, it is something we should probably do, but uh, you know, when you have not so many resources and not so much time from them, uh, at the end you have to uh, uh, give a priority list, and so probably this is not on the top of it. Uh, but by the way, we are always open to any suggestions. So, uh, from the audience here or from the membership base, if there is some. Uh, suggesting to improve our transparency we are open to uh, to listen and possibly to react to do something in that direction 
to improve as we always strive to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriele, and some some great ideas there. And um, looking forward to see maybe maybe one of one or two of them uh, turned into action. Good stuff. Um, okay, so uh, that concludes that round. Um, I'm slowly running out of questions. There was um, there would be redundant questions because, for example, the uh, conflict of interest policy that's been in use already by, by you because you're all um, uh, current members of, of the membership committee and um, the other questions have been answered uh, on the mailing list so yeah I would just um, call out for um, questions from the audience maybe one last round is certainly possible and um, otherwise, we can spend maybe the last 15 minutes um, with uh, just general discussion, uh, just open, open mic, and uh, and, uh, and we just uh, we just talk. I have to say, it's getting a bit late in uh, Central Europe, so. Okay. Um, the other option is that, um, uh, so if, if there's no further questions or, uh, I mean, maybe just statements from, from the candidates, like closing statements, everybody gets um, three minutes and, um, and then we close the call if there's no questions. Three, two, one. Okay. Then let's have some let's say three minutes uh, closing statement from from all the candidates and then we would um, then we would adjourn and uh, all head to to the vote which is open now so marina how about you start okay um well um what else to add um as i was mentioning at the beginning uh, uh, first of all thanks a lot for uh, for joining uh, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, organizing. Uh, uh, I want to say also thanks to to the uh, to the team that uh, uh, during uh, those three sessions uh, uh, was uh, helping with the recording of the sessions, uh, and uh, we give uh, uh, a chance to uh, others to watch the the videos, the recording uh, uh, later on. So thanks. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot for uh, organizing all, uh, all this. Um, apart from that, uh, um, I, I really hope to, to see those uh, um, sessions, of those uh, town hall uh, more uh, frequently. I, I like uh, the, the idea to interact uh, more with, uh, with the local communities. And uh, yeah, this is something uh, I, I would like to, to do in any case uh, uh, in the uh, in the MC, if uh, of course uh, uh, the result of the election will be in that direction, but uh, in any case, also as a, a normal uh, uh, member of the board of trustees, so keep uh, keep going uh, with the uh, uh, questions, ideas, uh, feedback, uh, and uh, let's continue to to engage. That's all. Back to you, Torsa. Yay! Yes, indeed. Thanks, Marina and uh, Shinji, your closing statement. Okay. And thank you for uh, uh, attending and so organizing. So, so, so it, it is uh, very interesting. So the discussion or uh, so question or so answer session. Yeah. I think so. Uh, this is so continue with so good so uh, good, yeah uh, events. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, and that indeed, Shinji, and uh, much appreciated um, uh, you spending the time. And it must be must be very early in Japan. 
Thanks so much for that. Um, next one, Gustavo, your closing statement, please. So, um, nothing more to, to add. Um, thanks to you all to be here and organize these sessions. Um, I hope we will meet uh, together in Milano in some days. And uh, in Milano, I will be happy to share with you all our strategy, our process, uh, our our engagement to uh, reach the result of the Latin American conference and um, uh, well uh, it was uh, an amazing event uh, and, and probably uh, it uh, is in our our mind because uh, we expected a lot and we reached a lot. Um, and uh, my enthusiasm to, to talk about is uh, what uh, I hope uh, I will see uh, from you all, from the community, from the members uh, in Milano. I hope we can start uh, a, a new uh, uh, a new phase of our project of our organization there, and uh, I will be happy to be part of uh, this new uh, moment of our TDF. So thank you all, uh, and uh, see you. Uh, in personal or online in some place. Thank you, Torsten. Here, here, and uh, amen to that. I'm so much looking forward to meet indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Gustavo, so much. Um, then over to Gabriele and your closing statement, please. Here I am again. I'm looking forward to meet all of you, especially Gustavo, who can proudly show his Italian passport, hopefully. <laughs> By the way, um, jokes apart. Uh, again, it's, a, it's all about fun. So, <laughs> so um, I want to say a very big thank you to you, Thurston, to have been moderated so uh, professionally and greatly this meeting. Want to thank uh, Guilhem and all the staff uh, who is behind uh, this uh, event to organize, to record, and to you know provide the infrastructure, uh, which is not at you know uh, uh, give, uh, given for granted. And um, my last statement, uh, apart from the many thank you to all who deserve it, is also uh, I want to re reprise something that Marina said. Uh, don't forget to look around. What I mean is uh, there are many communities, especially in the open source panorama, uh, apart from us, and uh, we could try having a look to them, to their behavior, to them, to their uh, ecosystem, to their uh, tools and whatever, and try to get the best from uh, this experience and try to um, create bridges with them to exchange uh, positive uh, experiences and to uh, learn from each other and possibly to collaborate as well. Uh, I remember when I first was in Almeria, it was for the KDE Academy, and it was great to have such um, contamination, let's say, uh, of ideas, of um, habits and whatever between the two uh, communities, uh, it was really uh, stimulating. Uh, I was really uh, happy to be there and I learned a lot as well. So never forget to do this and uh, so to look around and to uh, uh, keep bridges with the other communities and, and uh, still 
we could say their best practices. For the rest, uh, thank you for attending and the people who is attending on uh, at this moment and all, also to those uh, who will be uh, uh, watching the, the, the registration, the recording. And uh, happy voting and uh, thanks again and good night from Italy. Thank you so much, Gabriella. And to many, 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 many thanks um, to all of you, in particular to the candidates uh, for all the time you're, you're spending for TDF and the community, for all the energy and the passion uh, you're putting into that project. And it really shows, like, it's just, just great to, to hear that, this enthusiasm uh, and this motivation. And I, I very much look forward uh, to meet many of you in person um, in Milano. And um, yeah, so with that, I think we can close this call. Many thanks um, for being here. And um, let's get the vote out and uh, make LibreOffice and TDF rock. And um, wish you all a good night or a good day um, uh, in Japan and uh, hope to see you soon.